We're in the choir with no name, the choir for people whose lives have been affected by homelessness, and it is our great pleasure to kick off proceedings for you this morning. And we're going to start with the great anthem of hope by Fleetwood Mac called Don't Stop Thinking About Tomorrow. I'm the founder and the chief exec of the choir with no name. Uh, and I just want you to think for a little minute about what image comes to mind when you think about homelessness or a homeless person. I'm guessing that it might be somebody in a sleeping bag in a doorway. It might be somebody crouched in a tube station with a cardboard cup holding a few coins. Uh, we're here to challenge that for you today and instead introduce you to some people affected by homelessness uh, like Ollie, and like Elizabeth, and like Sasha, who might not necessarily fit that traditional image that you have in your minds. Um, now, when I founded the first choir, which was back in 2008, what I really hoped was that we would build a community, that our choir members would come together, find a place they really felt like they belonged, that fundamental human need to belong, and where they could begin to put the, uh, build their confidence and put their... Uh, and the, the, the skills that they needed to build the rest of their lives back together. What I didn't actually realize at that point and what I didn't plan to do uh, was to challenge the way that people think about homelessness. But as we got out there and started gigging, we quickly realized that that was what we were doing. So people would come to a gig and they would be expecting something very serious and charity and worthy, and then we would turn up. And, uh, and instead of that, they would, they would leave feeling uplifted and joyous and inspired and full of life. And that's really what we are trying to do as an organization. So to do that, we go out and gig as often as we can in places from homeless hostels to the festival hall where we did our Christmas gig a couple of years ago. 
Um, and uh, we're also going to be releasing a single later this year uh, that is to do exactly that, to celebrate the individuality of our choir members. Um, to get the camaraderie that we build on stage, where, where, we, where the kind of magic really happens is in our weekly rehearsals. And that's where we come together, we have a cup of tea, uh, we sing for an hour and a half, and then we share a hot meal together that's been cooked by a team of volunteers. And that uh, very simple format leads to 98% of our choir members saying that they've built confidence as a result of being with us, 96% saying they've made lasting friendships at choir, and 79% of our choir members would say that our um, attending choir rehearsals has helped them to move on into more secure housing or into employment or volunteering. Um, yeah, thank you, we're really proud of that too. I want to... Um, I'm going to bring those stats to life by just sharing a short excerpt of a, of a story from one of our former choir members. Um, this guy came to us as one of our founding choir members, and, and uh, this, so he'd been battling with addiction for 20 years by this point, and he'd just lost his dad, and because his dad was, uh, was the name on their council tenancy, he'd also lost his home. Um, and he says, if I hadn't attended that first choir rehearsal, I don't even know if I would still be alive today. I've known the view from a bridge on a stormy night. Choir gave me a reason to hold on when stuff got even tougher. It brought me function and purpose when I'd forgotten these things even existed. This is a life-saving project, be sure of this. I am living, breathing, singing and acting proof. And uh, Adele is alluding there to the fact that he is now a professional singer and actor, which is obviously great news. Um, that is one, one story of the absolutely many that we could share with you about what we do. But um, before I go on any longer, I'm just going to hand you back to Sam. Oh, so this is our London choir, everybody. Um, <laughs> We also have choirs in Birmingham, Liverpool and Brighton with imminent plans for more. Um, but I'm going to hand you back to Sam to take us through the next song, which we hope that you will help us with. Thank you very much. Everybody say hey-oh. Hey-oh. Say hey-oh. Hey hey-o. You are sounding fantastic. We would like you to join in with the chorus of our next song. It's made famous by Jackie Wilson. It's called Higher and Higher. Let's learn the chorus together. It goes like this. Your love keeps lifting me up. Your turn. And go. Your love keeps lifting me up. Nice. Can we really land the word up? This is going to be a choir rehearsal. Okay. Your love keeps lifting me up. Your turn. Three. And. Your love keeps lifting me up. Yes. Next bit goes. Keeps on lifting me. Your turn. Keeps on lifting me up. Nice. I think to get this, you need to... Put a bit of twang into the word on, okay? So access a bit of Shania Twain, and we're going to go, keeps on lifting me, your turn, and... Keeps on lifting me. On. on. Thank you. Well done. Uh, next is, uh, you need to pick up a hammer, because we're going to really land these three notes. It's going to go like this. Lifting me, pick up your hammer. Lifting me, perfect. Higher and higher, higher, higher and higher, higher. So when I repeat it higher, I want you to do the action associated with a Mexican wave. But it won't be a Mexican wave because we're not starting at the front, going to the back. We're all going to do it at the same time. Who can show me what, that, what we need to do? Beautiful, thank you. Higher and higher, higher. You guys do it up there. <laughs> okay. Whole thing. I'll sing it, then you sing it to me. Your love keeps lifting me up, keeps on lifting me, lifting me higher and higher, higher. Your turn. Three, four. Your love keeps lifting me up, keeps on lifting me. Not bad! Do you think they can join us? Here it comes. I'll show you when to join.